We're about to embark on what many people would consider to be the trip of a lifetime, an exploration of the Baltic capitals. Good Hello. afternoon, my name is Ryan, and Hi, it's, it's a pleasure name. to be your partner. Thank you. Uh, can I take some time of yours and tell you everything about this week? Yes, please. Uh, Today, we'll board a cruise ship that departs Stockholm, and during the next week, we'll sail across the beautiful Baltic Sea, stopping in Tallinn, Estonia, St. Petersburg, Russia, Helsinki, Finland, and Visby, Sweden. We'll end our cruise in the Danish capital, Copenhagen. It's going to be one exciting voyage. Along the way, we'll meet local guides who will show us some of the hidden gems of their cities, as well as some of their favorite spots. But back to where our journey begins, where we were lucky enough to spend a day in Sweden's lovely capital, Stockholm. Hey, I'm Ralph Grizzle, and I'm with Monica Bengtsson. Hello. Welcome to Stockholm. Well, thank you. And as you can see, it's a busy, very crowded day here in Stockholm. Uh, we are on a city built on 14 islands, beautiful waterways here, and that's one great way to get out and, and see Stockholm. But now we are in... The Royal Palace. The Royal Palace here on the island of Gamla Stan. And this is one of the most visited places for, uh, for tourists coming to Stockholm. And uh, the Royal Palace uh, has a changing of the guard. It's coming up in just a few minutes. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And I think... Uh, I think we should head in to see that. Absolutely, let's do that. Okay. So this is a beautiful square we're in now. It's probably the most beautiful square in Gamla Stan and maybe even all of Stockholm. Monica, why don't you tell us where we are now? This is actually the very heart of the old town. This place, beautiful place, is called Stortorget. Uh, you can see there are a lot of good restaurants and cafes all around here. And actually one of my favorite places is over there. It's called Fuglar Koppen. Uh, and also on this side here you can see the Nobel Museum where you can find all kinds of interesting history about the Nobel Prize. So yeah. it's a very good place to come to. Yeah, it's extremely beautiful. Why don't we head over to your favorite cafe and have good. a coffee? Good idea. Directly behind me is City Hall. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would I want to go into a city hall? It's not a place you go into unless, you know, you're getting married or you're in trouble somehow. But this city hall really is spectacular. It's where the Nobel Banquet Dinner takes place each year, held in the Blue Hall. And in the Golden Room, there are 18 glass and gold mosaics. And also, you can climb the tower for a bird's eye view over all of Stockholm. As you can see, we're here on a stunning summer day in Stockholm, and this city has often been referred to as uh, this beauty on water. And certainly, you can see that here better than any place else, I think. It doesn't get any better than this. Monica, where are we? We are at Fjällgatan in, in, uh, in Stockholm, and uh, it's very often referred to as being the balcony of Stockholm, so you can really see the most beautiful view from here. Yeah, and behind us you can see uh, some of the 14 islands that make up Stockholm. Yeah, so one of them behind here is Djurgården, where you can find the amusement park Gröna Lund. And right behind here, we have Skeppsholmen with the uh, uh, Vasa Museum. And right on the other side, you can see the whole of the old town. So that's back to Gamla Stan. And these are uh, only three of the islands that uh, make up the 14 islands in Stockholm. But if those aren't enough, there are 30,000 islands, islets, and rocks out in the archipelago. And that's where we're headed next. So overnight we've made our way across the Baltic Sea and this morning we woke up to Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. 
And we're with our guide here, Katrin. And uh, can you tell us where we are now in the old city here? Yes, absolutely. Today we are, we are in the old town of Tallinn, and this is the upper town. The old town of Tallinn consists of two parts. Everything on the hill is upper town, everything down the hill is the lower town, and this part is the upper town. As you can see from here, there's a beautiful view to the lower town buildings. We are in the, one of the most beautiful viewing points in the old town of Tallinn. And I can point out to you some beautiful towers okay. from here. All the way behind us is the tower of the town hall. It's a great tower with partially green top and a very top of this tower is the symbol of Tallinn, which is called Old Thomas. It's depicting a man who's wearing his typical 16th century uniform and is holding in one hand a flag. So he's the guy who's keeping his eye on the town. And besides that, there's a beautiful old medieval churches in the city. And they're all located in the lower part of the old town. So very, very worth to take a look into these old buildings. There are two very nice streets in the old town, which used to uh, join the upper town and the lower town. One of the streets is called the long leg, and the other one the short leg. So that's why the Italian is known as the limping town. And the, uh, the long leg is, is just below us here. Uh, we, yes, exactly. Yeah. It goes all the way down here. So this, this is one of the streets which takes you to the lower part okay. of the old town. So this is an ideal way to begin a, a tour of Tallinn. And you can do a walking tour of Tallinn to begin in the upper town and to walk your way back to the ship to the lower town. Exactly. town you can mostly see the government buildings in the medieval times it was also called the, um, the town for the upper class people sort of for the nobles for the uh, clergy for the knights and lower town and on the other hand what is for for the lower class people for the German knights for the German merchants and craftsmen so even today there are differences between the upper and the lower town. Here you can see the government buildings, and in the lower town there are the nightclubs, pubs and restaurants. So a beautiful place to spend your free time. So now we're in one of the towers here in the old city of uh, Tallinn. Uh, we're on the city wall. And this is one of how many towers, Katrin? One of the 24 towers in the city wall of Tallinn. This one has a name, too. Yes, actually, each tower has its own name, but this one in particular is called the Nun's Tower. Okay. And this is, this is something that you recommend visitors do, that they, uh, that they climb these towers. It's not so easy. It's not for everyone, is it? Yeah, exactly. Maybe most for the uh, young people or people who are ready to do some exercise. It's definitely worse to take a look into these kind of spooky towers. Yeah. It has actually a very nice view from these towers. And uh, some of the towers were used in the medieval times as the prisons. Some were used as the watchtowers. So you can feel a certain atmosphere in them. And this is where they defended the city. Exactly. Uh, they had a lot of, uh, lot of methods, such as pouring uh, hot tar uh, exactly. on the enemy. Well, they tried to get rid of the enemies in every way, how it worked in medieval times. And one of the uh, examples what they used was to the, the pour the hot tar on the, on the people. Yeah. Quite cruel. Katrin, this is a great place to relax, and we've had uh, an exciting three or four hours here in Tallinn, and I think we'll sit here for a while, and, but I wanted to thank you for taking us around. You're and, very welcome. And a little bit here, we can make our way back down to the ship, some of these, uh, down some of these charming streets. As we ended our day in Tallinn, we stopped in to take a look at the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. It was built during the time when Estonia was still part of the Russian Empire. The Russian revival style of the church prepared us for what was to come next, St. Petersburg.
This morning we arrived by ship in the city once known as Leningrad, and today, of course, the city is known as St. Petersburg. I'm here with our guide, Maria. And Maria, can you tell us, where are we standing now? Now we're with you at uh, Palace Square. It is called so because uh, only there is Winter Palace, which is the part of the Hermitage Museum. And Hermitage Museum uh, consists of five separate buildings, and Winter Palace used to be the residence of all monarchs. Okay, now we can see a crowd gathering behind us now, people going into the Hermitage Museum. Yes, it is quite busy, uh, especially in summer, uh, but uh, it's better to come in the morning to avoid this line. What will they see inside? Inside you will see different collections by uh, European masters, uh, such as uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Titian, Raphael, um, so quite a lot of. Uh, there are five million uh, pieces of art. What is the best way to experience St. Petersburg? Of course, you want to see the highlights and this sort of thing. What about uh, to experience the place we're in now? We're near Nevsky Prospect, I believe. Yeah, Nevsky Prospect is the real pearl of uh, St. Petersburg. It's like Champs-Élysées in Paris. And uh, quite uh, a lot of landmarks we have, such as the Church of the Savior on the Spilled Blood, St. Isaac's, which you can see here from uh, the Palace Square, and uh, different uh, cathedrals, temples, so quite a lot to see. And St. Petersburg is called uh, the Museum Under the Open Sky because we have 2,000 museums in St. Petersburg. Okay, well, it's an early morning, so uh, we've got the day to explore, so uh, let's get out and do that. Yeah, let's get started. St. Petersburg is a city of many fascinating sites, from markets to music by local musicians to canal cruises. On the outskirts of the city are grand palaces, such as Peterhof, with its beautiful gilded fountains. And in the city center are beautiful churches with their ornate designs. So Maria, certainly this must be one of St. Petersburg's most well-known attractions, uh, the Church on the Spilled Blood. Now why is it called Church on the Spilled Blood? So it is called so because on the 1st of March in 1881, there was a terrorist action against Alexander II, Russian Emperor. Uh, the carriage was passing here, so there was no church, that was only the street. And uh, um, the terrorist group, which was called People's Will, they uh, decided uh, to assassinate the Tsar. The church was built as a monument to Alexander II. Inside, there are more than 80,000 mosaic tiles. All of the sightseeing is bound to leave you thirsty and hungry. In fact, you might say that you're as hungry as a bear, a Russian bear, no less. Try a bowl of borscht, a popular soup made with beetroot. It's sure to fortify you for further exploration. All of this exploring is definitely hard work. So perhaps it's no surprise that we boarded the ship hungry again. Lucky for us, Regent Seven Seas Voyager features four restaurants for the evening meal. During the day, we were also able to dine by the pool, choosing from a wide selection of soups, salads, and grilled items. We were even able to sample local specialties from the market in Helsinki on the ship a day before we arrived. So today we're in Helsinki and I'm with uh, some folks from the tourism office. Uh, it's uh, Christina and Hi. Jenny. Hi. And um, it's a July day here. What happened <laughs> with the weather? Yeah, yesterday was beautiful. Yeah. We had a wonderful sunny day and but now maybe a little bit later we're yeah. going to see the sun and yeah. but that's a Baltic itinerary basically yes, um, I mean you'll have nice sunny days and sometimes you'll have uh, you know you'll have weather like this so you have to come prepared for any of type course. of weather yeah you should yeah you can only imagine what it's like here on a beautiful day a beautiful sunny day you know with this lake and the city behind us what are some of the things that that you like to expose cruise passengers to well, there are the main sites, of course, to be seen. Um, the Rock Church and the Storm and Linda Sea Fortress, beautiful places. And, uh, of course, it's just a great thing to, to stroll around the streets of Helsinki and see the parks and the, the queen side of the city, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. 
if we go back to the sea, uh, sea fortress, yeah. the Swimilina, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's right, yes. And it's, it's something that uh, you have to access by boat. How, how do you see the, uh, the sea fortress? Uh, you need to take a ferry from the market square. It's quite easy and uh, takes about 15 minutes to get to the Swamilina Island. I mean, yes. what, what do you do? How do you recommend you experience it? How much time would you spend there and what sort of... This it depends. Um, in, in an hour you can see quite a lot, but you can also have a picnic there and, and relax and enjoy the beautiful views. We also enjoy the views on the way back to the city centre, where we would step off the ferry for more culinary exploration. So we are in the old mar market hall in Helsinki that was built in 1888. And here, for example, we have all these beautiful vegetables from, from Finland and fresh berries, um, lots of things that you can find here. Do the local people still use this market? Yes, yes, they do. Yeah. Um, so you come here to get, these berries are from, uh, from Finland, of course. Yes. Um, and we see blueberries and, uh, and these and beautiful chanterelle uh, mushrooms, chanterelles, exactly. uh, cherries. And, uh, and these are everything that you can find in the Finnish forest and, yeah. and you can pick them yeah. there as well. But if you can't go there, you can pick it up from yeah. here. Yeah, it's very nice. Are you on one of the cruises as well? Uh, uh, we actually, no, we're actually not on a cruise. <laughs> Good. That's it's good. Really good. Yeah. So it's the first time for you to have oh, reindeer yeah. meat. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you going to try bear meat in a can no. because they have that in the oh, market as know. well? So Jenny, there must be a lot of reindeer in this country. Yes, of course we do. Yeah, yeah, because you've got things like this. You've got what? What is this? Yes, this one is a creamy smoked reindeer soup. Okay, so you've got that, and then we have. And that one is reindeer pate. So now we're in Kapaturi Market, just outside of Market Hall. And Jenny, there are some unusual souvenirs here. Yes, we have beautiful items from Finland. Uh, some made of wood, some out of uh, reindeer horn. This, for example, is a butter knife made of birch wood. It's something you actually use in your homes yes. and all. Yes, as we well. do. Yeah. And then maybe you would use the, the reindeer cheese cutter <laughs> and, maybe, uh, yeah. as well. Nice, nice item. Yeah. And then there's a, everybody needs a, a bear pen. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's a must have item. Any other? So these are, uh, these are just peas. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's like summer food that's really Finnish. We, the, the most popular thing in, to buy in here are peas and strawberries. Okay. They're really sweet. You don't need to wash them. You Look don't need that. to cook them or anything. Yeah. Open it and okay. yeah, and just eat it. Usually people eat just the inside of it, but sometimes people eat also the, the outside, the outside part. <laughs> That's the hardcore people who, yeah, who do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. I must be part Finnish. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. It is. very Finnish. The one thing we did not see on Region 7 Seas Voyager was a check shoved under our nose each time we ordered a cocktail or a glass of wine. We were able to sample some great wines without having to think about who was picking up the tab. We were sure not to indulge too much, however, because tomorrow would bring another day of exploring this time in the city of roses and ruins. So today we're in Gotland. It's an island in Sweden, and we're in the town of Visby. And I'm with Berit, uh, our tour guide. And yes. Berit, this is a UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because of three reasons, in fact. Uh, because of the warehouses made, uh, built from limestone, and the city wall, very well kept, and the street system from the Viking era. How old are we looking at here for, say, the, the city wall? Uh, uh, well, around 1200, 1250. Mm -hmm. That was the first part, the sea wall, built to protect Visby from the pirates.
Now, people from all over Sweden, they know that Visby is a very special place. And uh, part of it, I think, as you mentioned, is, is the light. Is the yes, light here? Yes, there's a very special light in the summer. You wake up at night and you cannot believe it. It's incredible. It's amazing, really. That's why we have a lot of painters and artists coming here to Gotland. You say that um, the people here and Visby and in Gotland, in fact, they're a little different uh, than the rest of Sweden. Yes, you could say so. I think uh, Gotland is really another country. That's why when I go to Stockholm, I say I go to Sweden. It is a special place. People are very special because of old traditions. And uh, there's a certain pride and uh, justice and trust here that mm. I really appreciate very, very much. We could have easily stayed longer in Visby, but Regent Seven Seas Voyager had a long sea journey ahead of her. So we turned back to the ship for one last night on board. The next morning, we stepped out on deck to a beautiful sunrise as Seven Seas Voyager made its way back into Copenhagen. As we readied ourselves to disembark, we knew that we had one more destination to explore. We're at Langelinia, and this is a place where cruise ships typically dock in Copenhagen, and it's a wonderful place to dock because you're within walking distance of the city. And this is one of my favorite walks, to leave here and to walk to the Little Mermaid. She's only steps away, actually, uh, to continue on by Emilienborg Palace, where you can see the changing of the guard around noon or so, and then to continue on uh, toward the beautiful harbor known as Newhound. And, you know, if you take your time through there, it can take you 30 minutes or so to walk what would normally take you five minutes. It's such a beautiful area. Then you cross Kongens Nietorf and uh, we find the main pedestrian shopping street called Stroet. And it's quite a long street. Uh, you could spend an hour or so walking along that street. You come to uh, City Hall Square and then cross that into Tivoli where you're guaranteed to have a great time. <laughs> So you've just ended your cruise here in Copenhagen. Now, you could fly home, but that would be a big mistake because then you're gonna miss all that the capital of the world's happiest nation has to offer. Now, to see what it has to offer, it's best to begin here in Kongens Nitor. This is the King's New Square, and it's the heart of Copenhagen. You can take two days at Copenhagen and you can pretty much uh, see all that you need to see, or at least get a good taste of it. One of the best ways to see Copenhagen is on a canal cruise where you can relax on the water as you pass beautiful sights. In fact, being on the water seems to be one of the central themes here in the Baltic Sea. Come explore for yourself this enchanting region of the Baltic where you'll find castles and kings and fairy tale nations with a strong heritage. I hope you've enjoyed cruising along with us on this Baltic voyage.